Hello again, Father John Barry, me alone with you as we go through this 10th chapter of the mystery uh, book and the mystery of God book. And I appreciate uh, all the time you've put in to learn about the faith as we're getting near the uh, back end of this book. We have like three, I don't know, 10, 11, 12. We're, we're getting to the, uh, the finishing of part of the book. So resurrection and ascension, that's the topic, Jesus' resurrection and ascension. It's about what happened to him, but what happened to him also, we get engaged and involved in it by being his followers, by being his believers. There's a promise that we triumph over death, we rise up, but we even get to start our eternal life, our Christian life, our life alive to God right here on the earth is like a kind of startup, but then there's an invitation to glory, to heaven, to its victory. And then Jesus has said, ascended up into the heaven where he is seated at the right hand of the Father as the savior of the human race, the God-man. He has always been the eternal son, equal to the Father there in heaven and with the Spirit, the Holy Trinity. But when he went up to heaven after his mission on the earth, he became the Lamb of God, he became the, the resurrection, he became the one who ascended and is seated now representing the, the one that triumphed for the human race, our hero. So that's what the meanings are. In Ascension, it goes back to when he was on a mountain. It was 40 days after he rose from the dead. So he got, came out of the tomb, the cave he was put in, and rose from the dead. That's what we call Easter. And 40 days later, his Ascension... He gathered a whole bunch of people who believed in him, loads and loads of people, went up a mountain, and he said goodbye to them, and he just basically ascended from their sight. Uh, something happened in the sky. A number of angels came to meet and escort him back into heaven, but now they're in, great, in the great exaltation because Jesus was going up as, as the hero of going to, heaven's going to be filled with multitudes of people now who believed in him, who have been invited as the good, the just, that the Father wants in heaven, and Jesus the one that made it possible. So the page on our book, page 103, just starts with a, uh, a special ceremony that's done as leading into the Easter Vigil Mass, the Saturday night of Easter Sunday, the Saturday night we have a procession of a candle and it's the big candle that you see in church, the Easter candle, and it's lit for the first time and it's processed in by a deacon if he's available or a priest and, and then it's put in the church and then we all light our candles and celebrate that we're children of the light and that Easter has brought light to the world, Jesus has brought light, his resurrection. And so that's what that picture is about. Now, when you come into our church, there's a lot of resurrection symbols. Have you gone and seen them? So when you come right in where the, where the holy water had, you know, has been placed, uh, you look up, you see Jesus is, is a resurrection symbol. He's, he's holding this book of the Gospels, of this story, and that the story ends with people winning, winning into salvation, winning to become children of God forever, getting saved by Christ. He's right there holding that book, but he's also looking in triumph at you, and he's saying, I am the resurrection. And that's, that's meant for us to feel good, especially in a church called the resurrection, where, where a church that celebrates this particular aspect of Jesus' life, but it is the greatest act. It's even really greater than Christmas because Jesus rose from the dead, everything about Jesus is true now. St. Paul once said, if Christ isn't risen, then our faith is in vain. But Jesus is risen. And that those three words mean everything. Jesus is risen. So we have pictures up on the wall as you come into the church. You can see some women. And they're at a tomb. And there's an angel there. And the tomb is empty. And they thought Jesus was still dead and inside the tomb. And the angel says, he's not here anymore. Notice the soldiers have run off. Something big has occurred here. Jesus is risen. He's no longer dead. 
Look, see, the tomb is empty. His body wasn't stolen, you know. His body wasn't hidden away by the Romans, okay. Or he didn't just kind of recover from his wounds suddenly and walk out. He's risen. And the angel speaks, and the angel doesn't lie, of course. And the angel's very happy to announce this news. And these three women, they all happen to have the name of Mary. Okay? They, and one woman they think is Joanna, and another woman, Susan, that also get involved in the story. But Mary Magdalene, the key figure, Mary Clopas, another key figure, and another woman named Mary, they call her the other Mary, <laughs> that they discover this amazing thing that now is always celebrated as Easter for the Catholic faith and other Christians that share the same you know, belief that Jesus is risen. And so they see it. That's one of the pictures. Another one is Thomas. A week later, he hears that lots of people are meeting Jesus, and he comes and he wants to touch and feel the place. He saw the wounds of Jesus, but now he saw that Jesus is alive from the dead, but he kept the wounds as evidence of who he was. And Thomas, it says, he believes. He sees and believes. And he says a very short prayer, my Lord and my God. So, and Thomas follows. He believes Jesus is risen. Then we have another picture of Jesus with his heart uh, shining his love forever and ever for us as a human person that came among us. God is a human person. He shows his loving heart to us, the sacred heart. That's also in, in the lobby. Okay? And then we have some other images of Jesus risen from the dead. And, of course, a big image of the resurrection, which is the peacock. The peacock is a big symbolic image of the resurrection and all the color of it. And so that's when you walk into our church, okay? The bells even outside are meant to ring out the story that, that Christ, Christ is come to save us and he accomplished the task and now he's leaving it up to us to gather his church and to become his people and to bring good news to the world that everything is Everything is changed by Jesus. So Jesus up in the heavens sitting on a throne. But somehow too he says he lives in us. Jesus said I am with you always even to the end of the age, end of time. I am with you. How could he be with us? But we know that Jesus said things like, like I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. So we know that's one way that he's with us in Holy Communion. But Jesus says he's in our souls, and that's why we get baptized, because it's a beginning when Jesus can reside in our souls, as if there's like a little throne inside of us where Jesus lives. And, and when we live in faith, it's like Jesus is not just on the throne in heaven, but he's freely on the throne in our life, and that's when we can say, Jesus is Lord. So this chapter on resurrection, Jesus is risen. Now, page 104, uh, there's a story uh, uh, that's told, and St. Paul is saying it to the church in Corinth. He's saying, I saw Jesus risen from the dead. I saw him. There's not many people have seen Jesus just appear to them, but I have. And I was a persecutor trying to stop the church. I'm on switch sides, and I'm here to tell you people in this town called Corinth, this big powerful city, that I hand on to you what I received, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried, he was raised on the third day, Good Friday, Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday, third day, in accord with the scriptures. In other words, it was predicted, predicted in the Bible that that someone would die for us and rise for us. Predicted. Came true. Jesus made those promises and prophecies, predictions in the Bible come true. And it says he appeared to Cephas, in other words, for Peter. And then to the twelve. 
and they appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living. Paul is writing, uh, you know, a decade, two, three decades after Jesus' resurrection, Paul's still alive and he's saying, there's people who saw Jesus alive from the dead that are still around, not just me. There's all kinds of people who have seen him. And so that's how the Christian church gets started, with eyewitnesses to Jesus. But then Thomas is an interesting case in that Jesus says something to Thomas. He says, blessed are those who have not seen but will believe. That through most of time we won't have Jesus to walk up to and feel his hand and say, okay, you are the same person I saw at the Last Supper. You are that person. You are Jesus. Something's changed. Yes, something has changed. I'm now the Lord of heaven who is the Savior of the earth. This good news, the gospel. But the next part is Jesus returns to the Father, the ascension. And that was page 105. And it says that, uh, that angels appeared when Jesus flew up into the heavens. These angels came and they said, why are you still up looking in the sky? Because now Jesus is out of their sight. Why are you still looking up into the sky? It reminds me, I was at a, a launch of a, of a space exploration where they blasted off from you know, a spaceship, a rocket ship from Florida, from the famous uh, uh, place in Florida where they launch ships off of the, off of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and it was so powerful to see it take off. And then we just watched it until it became like a little ball of fire and then just eventually up into the sky and then you really couldn't see it. But everybody's just still looking, <laughs> still looking. And the angel said, why are you still looking in the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven. So Jesus has gone up to heaven. He will return in the same way. He will return. So this is what we have in the Paschal Mystery. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Okay? No matter what mystery of faith you know, okay? save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. We believe Jesus died, that's Paschal Mystery. He rose, Paschal Mystery. And the third part, he's coming again. He's coming again. There's a time when the world will end and Jesus will come down from the skies like he went up. But when he comes down from the skies, every eye will see him. It's called the second coming. And we'll know that the world as we know it has come to a finish. And humanity now will have a new heavens and a new earth. Everything will change. But either you believed in Jesus or you didn't. It, will people be alive for that event in our lifetime? We don't know. Everybody before us was not alive for the return of Christ. He didn't come. But he could come. He could come again. And so that's what the whole season of Advent's about. We talk about that there is an Advent or a time when before Jesus returns gloriously. and But where is Jesus? He's in the heavens. He's sitting in the heavens with the Father. And as people die, that's when they actually see him again. All, the most of the history of the world today has just been, if, if you die, then that's when you see Christ again, rather than his second, his second coming or his glorious return. You'll see him by the fact that your soul goes up to heaven first, and then when Jesus comes back to the world, all the people will rise from the dead in their bodies and go up to heaven. That's the timing of things, in case you just never really put it perfectly together. That you die, you're laid to rest, your soul, though, goes up to God. Okay? Time goes on and on and on and on until finally a final day, Jesus comes back to the world. In great power, everybody will see it then. He's not coming in secretly like a lamb when he did in baby Jesus. He's going to come back in great power like a lion. He's going to come back in, in glory and you're going to know that something huge is happening. Your, your soul will know it. 
you will immediately begin to, to understand that something huge is ready to happen and you'll know it's God. But we're not waiting for that day to come. We're getting ready now to be ready to experience God and see God. You can't be bold in your sin. You can't be brazen. You can't be unrepentant. You can't be like not sorry for your serious sins or even your small sins. You gotta, you gotta be sorry to God and in that forgiveness, then you're ready. You're ready to meet God because you're humble. Blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is theirs, Jesus taught. Okay, so poor in spirit, you know, humble, okay? And when Jesus comes back, then the people that will live forever, what he does is he knows who are his own when their souls go up to heaven. He'll be able to sort people out. The, Jesus once taught, I, I sift people out like weeds and wheat. I sift people out, the bad and the good, like, like goats and sheep. I sift things out. I will, I will know who belongs and who doesn't. In fact, the people, when they get ready to be judged by me, the great judgment, they'll already know whether they have honestly you know, wanted a friendship with God or they were living against it. They'll already know what their fate is because they chose it. It's not like God is arbitrarily choosing who's going to go to heaven and hell at the finish. No, you've already chosen it. So that's why it's so important to live in faith now, right? So Jesus returns to the Father. And so that's why on Sunday, page 105 in your book, it's why on Sunday we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. It's the resurrection day. We celebrate that Jesus rose on a Sunday and he met with his believers, not just Thomas, but Peter, Andrew, Mary, Mary Magdalene, all the women and men, disciples, the children, okay? And Sunday has been the day to celebrate resurrection. And that's where we have mass. We have mass every day, but we have mass especially on Sunday and we give many more masses so people can come. We also put often on the mass you know on TV or internet or websites so people can experience it who may not be able to get here so as we go along Jesus is with us page 108 I mentioned that to you life has changed not ended 107 something I say at funerals I had a funeral today for somebody and it was over in the next parish and I was there with uh with Father Virginis, and it was one of his friends that died. And because I'm friends with Father Virginis, a Salvadoran priest, uh, I figured I should be there next to him as somebody important to him died. I would be next to him, showing him that uh, I'm still in your life, Virginis. This other person's going up to heaven now. And so he's going to be ahead of you in heaven. And you and I, Virginis, will, will stay friends. And another friend named Glenn. I, I've known Glenn a long time, for 20 years. And I went over to talk to Glenn, too, and say, I know he was your friend, too, this person who died, and I'm here. I'm here to, to show my care for you. So the funeral that you just see in the picture on 107, where there, the coffin is there and the priests are around the coffin, that was me today, except instead of just two clergy, there were several of us. And we all dress in white, and we put white cloth over the coffin. And we say, we pray you be clothed with immortality now. We pray that you'll be dressed as a saint in the holy light of God forevermore. We lay your body to the earth, so after the, after the mass today, the mass of Christian burial, the body was buried, okay? And there's special prayers over the earth for that. But we also believe that the body is in the earth, but the soul of the person is going on. This is what we were praying. Well, uh, I was uh, looking at the book, and the last part is the difference that faith makes in our life. So let's take a look at that. Our church makes a difference, uh, a cheerful saint. 
uh, page 109, let's talk about follower. Uh, Saint Philip Neri, okay? Yes, he was a priest, but he was a member of a group. And one of the things that's cool about Father Neri, or Philip Neri, is that he always felt like the joy and the gladness in your heart that Jesus loves you and that Jesus has prepared a place for you in the heavens and that Jesus is trying to gather people in the world into one goodness, into a family, you know, that should make us happy that we're part of something so grand and great and that Jesus is doing it. And so there's a group of priests that it's their mission to try to make that happen, to try to show the joy of the Lord in whatever they do. So I have a picture of Father Mullins. Father Mullins is a priest here in Washington. Now I've been a priest um, about seven years longer than him, but he, uh, you see his picture here, his dark hair, and so his church is near the zoo. If you ever been to the zoo in Washington, his parish is just down the street from it. And he has a lot of young uh, adults in his parish. He has a lot more young, younger people in his church. Not as many families like, like would be out in some parishes out this way, or older people, but he has a different kind of a crowd at his church. But one of the things they say that's true of him is that he does seem to just be positive. He seems to be excited, you know, because he's living for Jesus, okay? And that makes life so much different when you have that. You know, if you're living for yourself and everything's going all right, you know, then for that time, you may have a smile on your face. But if things go badly, if something goes wrong, and you lose a lot, okay, then everything was dependent on you having control, having everything go your way. But what about when things don't go your way? You can't control it. It's in the world, you can't. Well, I mean, you can't stop that hurricane from coming, destroying all your property and your business and maybe taking some lives. You can't stop something like that horrible thing to go through but you know you can't stop it well but you can always be in Jesus and so whether things are great for you or hard whether you're young or old whether you have lots of people around you loving you or whether you're on your own you always have Jesus and you can always bring a happiness to you so that's what I like about that also when you're living for heaven and not just for the earth, it's not like how much you can collect and how powerful you can get and you know how much fun you can have. Because when you know that you have forever and ever and you have everything that God's gonna make available to you, you can make some more sacrifices on this earth. You can. So the other priest, I, he's a picture of him in Togo. So he's in a, it's a country in Africa and you know, in Togo, things are, are, are uh, a little hard. You know, when you can't even just get clean water into your village to where you live, that's hard because we're used to getting water by just turning on our faucets in our homes, turning on the shower, you know, and water seems to be endless. It just seems like we have lots of it, but not so where he went to. So this, he, Father Ryan was friends with me and we were in a prayer group and he was made a priest a few years before me. And we enjoyed working together here in these churches in Washington, but he said that when he was younger, he was with the Peace Corps, and he went into the middle of Africa, and he saw that there's a lot of Catholics there, but hardly any priests to help them. And also, they need more people to help where countries are affluent to bring in help to places that are poor. And he decided he would move there from Washington as a priest to Togo and stay there for almost all year round. He comes back here to visit and see his family and see some of us, but then he goes back to Togo and lives there. He's very happy, he's in the picture there. He's the only white person you can see in the picture. And he's getting older now. He has, a, he has some gray, gray color in his beard but there's a smile on his face because he knows he's making a big difference there and they so much needed a priest. He's the only priest for 
lots and lots of land, lots of, for miles and miles and miles and miles. Here in Washington, we have several hundred priests to serve this territory, but where he is, he's also trying to teach some of the younger people to, to grow up and become a priest too, so that there'll be more that come from there. So you can look up Togo and where it is and find out that why do people go and do things like that and be a missionary? They do it because they know that Jesus Christ has changed the world, that Jesus Christ is, is the best thing that ever happened to our planet and ever will, and that the great thing that still is to come to the earth is the Lord's return. And then we have happiness forever with each other. And so faith makes a difference. It does. Faith makes a difference. And as you're just uh, you know, going through your teen years and going into your young adult years, there's so much that's happening to you, so many things going on. And with that help inside in your faith and with God helping you in your thoughts, and having the strength in your will to choose what is right and best for you, you have a great adventure. <laughs> you have a great adventure for you. Even if you can think of some of the problems and difficulties you have right now or disappointments you have with, with the Christian faith, with the church, with family, you know, with the nation, okay? Sure, this, we're not perfect. This world's full of people who, who are just fall short but you know what? Jesus is the one that we can all have in common and we can start heading to the glorious, victorious finish. Jesus is risen. Jesus is in heaven, ascended. He's calling us home there. And one day, uh, he will come again. So our next chapter will be about that. It will be about um, the resurrection story one more time and faith and then the Holy Spirit, and, and then you've done your, your work with these two books. Thank you so much for the time together today. I hope it bears fruit, and if there's some things you're learning, and you want to pass it on to me. I have an email address in the bulletin. I can be called up through the parish phone. You can leave a message for me to call you, or you can just come and see me here, or one of the other priests. And or Mrs. Stever, be glad to, to talk to you about what difference faith is making in your life. Good day.